Hey, this is Chris Crawford with Chris Crawford Knives. When it comes to building a slip joint, one of the most important parts of the process is fitting up the blade to the spring. You want the, the relationship between the blade and the spring to be such that when the blade is in the open half and closed position, the spring rests uh, in the same place. I'm going to do a demonstration showing this Kennedy fixture or Kennedy jig that I got from uh, Jant Supply and how I use that to go about getting that relationship set correctly. All right, this is my Kennedy fixture sitting off to the side here, but I wanna talk first about these parts. So these are just my uh, EDC one pattern or EDC zero, EDC B, whatever, my EDC pattern. And I've simply taken my pattern, I have it in a drawer over there, inscribed around it, drilled my holes, hardened it, tempered it, um, and then I put some layout fluid on there and then re scribed around there. And then just with an 80 grip belt, belt I ground, ground down almost to my scribe line. And so this is where I start when I start doing my fit up. I've got a lot of cleanup on these pieces to do before I get to using the fixture. But I did want to talk about that and just kind of show the whole process here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and I probably won't film all this, but the first thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, do a little work maybe on my spring and I'm going to finish out I always finish out this bottom side and when I say finish it out I'm talking about I'll make take it to like a 400 and then take my uh, wheel on my horizontal and just kind of clean up this inside right here I make my spring and pretty much finish the bottom part of my spring before I move on to working on my blade so let me let me do that and then uh, we'll get that done and then we'll start uh, we'll move on to the blade All right, I'm done cleaning up the inside of my spring, as you can see there. Basically, I did not worry about this back side, and I did not worry about the top side because, we'll, you know, that'll be ground down when we put it between the liners. Now I'm going to go back and do the same thing for the blade. Basically, just going all the way around the profile and cleaning it up, cleaning up in the spring notch right here across the back. I'm not going to worry about this across here because, again, that'll be like once once it goes together like this and it's in the liners then um you know that'll be ground flush so uh i'm gonna go around and just kind of clean this clean the profile on the blade up All right, I've got my spring and my blade cleaned up on the inside and you know all around the profile. I didn't I didn't do too much on the bottom here, but you can see it's smooth across there, across the back. And this is this is just first step, right? So so I'm kind of setting this and I'm about to go to the fixture and see how well uh, these things fit together. But first, we're going to take a look over here at the fixture and see some of its features. All right, what is this thing? So this is a tool uh, sold by Jant Supply. It's called the Kennedy Slip Joint Fixture. I think it's the official name for it. And basically it is a rise fall indicator with a lot of extra features. So if you're familiar with a Rupal jig or a basic rise fall indicator where you can put your blade and spring on there and then you got a dial indicator showing 
your uh, how high your spring sits when the blade is in the in the open half and closed position. Well, this is this is one of those uh, with just additional features. Now, let me first of all say, is this tool a necessity? And I'm going to say no. Uh, there are many ways to set the rise fall on your slip joints. Now, the way I started out doing it was just with a you know a board where I had well, for instance, let's see, could maybe use this as an example, just a, a board or something with some holes in it where you put them in there, you know, you use your liners to set your holes, you draw a line across the back, open and close the blade, you know, see where your spring is in relationship to the line and go from there. Step up from there would be the uh, Rupal jig or the rise fall indicator where you, know, you use a dial indicator uh, to tell you the, you know, the distance that the, the spring's traveling and where, where you need to make your adjustments. And then a step up, would be this. Now, the reason I say a step up is this, is there are some um, rise fall indicators that have built-in support for putting your spring under load. Um, I've not had one. This is the first jig that I've gotten where I can actually put the spring under load. I'll talk about that in a little bit, the advantage to that. But that's the advantage of this, is that, that on, a, on a traditional Rupal jig or rise fall indicator, your spring is not gonna be under load. Um, but with this, you can put your spring under load. Now, when I'm setting my relationships, when I'm setting it all up, I do it in a two-step process. I do it when the spring's not under load, and I do a little more work on the knife, and then I come back and do it again when the spring is under load. But anyway, let's, let's kind of get into this, and I'll just show you some of the features of it and what I like about it, and uh, then we'll, we'll get back to our, our project. This is the dial indicator. It goes in and out. It'll show you how much travel you have on your spring. We'll get, get back to that uh, in a minute. But one thing I really like about this is on this dial indicator, you got this little trigger right here where you can pull it back. And then you have this little key here, which will fit. So like if I pull this back, you may not be able to see it from the camera, but I have to change hands, do it this way. I can pull this back and I can insert this key right through there and it it's matched up with that and it'll hold this out of place so that's i like that that's that's pretty good now these are your i don't know what these are called i call these pucks for lack of a better word on this you have uh handles right here where you can move them around and what you're going to do is you're going to set these they have various holes you're going to set these to wherever whatever position you need them for the knife that you're making now what I'll be doing is I'll be doing this uh, little EDC pattern and I've got these front two already set and I don't have this last one set. I wanted to show you that. So uh, I can loosen it with this handle right here. Okay. And then this can move back and forth along, um, along this, this slot right through here. Uh, it can turn and you know, you can adjust it all different ways. So we'll get, we'll get back to that in a minute. All right, looking at the, let's see, what else is there? You got this handle right here. This handle is the handle for sliding this piece on the back right here, back and forth, okay? This is what connects this piece, which is what pulls your spring back. All right, so we'll look at that in a minute. But you can see, you can see it looks like you've got quite a long length of travel. You don't actually have that much. Uh, I can loosen this and so, well, my, my dial indicator is in the way, it's stopping it there. But this is as far as I can travel to the right. To the left, it's going to go a lot further. Now, if I'm doing a double-ended knife and I need this to travel further, uh, I think all that I have to do, I haven't done this, but I think all I have to do is basically unscrew this right here. And then I can flip this piece around. You can see where, um, where this piece comes into it. Uh, I, I should be able just to flip it over and screw it back in, and then I can adjust it for the other side. Now, the reason for this screw right here is so that you can set your height. Now, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but this right here is what goes over your spring. And so you'd put it over your spring and pull your spring back. But you need to set the height to match your match the thickness of your spring, and that can be done right there. So anyway, I think this piece can be reversed if I was doing uh, the spring on the other end, and then you'd have the travel going all the way back that way. 
Now also on the back right here is this handle. And what this does is basically slide your dial indicator. So you got a little disc down there. And so this would be how you would, um, you know, move this to the correct place where you need it for your knife. And so I've already got this set, I've got this set, and I've got these two set. All I need to do is set this last one right here, and I figured we'd uh, take a look at that. Now, I'm going to use my liner to set where my holes need to go, okay? So we'll get this in here. There's my first one. And then there's my second one. So I need to get this under my back, uh, my back hole right there. So I'm just going to kind of move it in and out until I find, let me make sure that, so that's an eighth inch, so that's too big. I need to come around here and get these 332nd ones. And, and this stuff in there, that's just, uh, that's just grease, you know, lubricant. All right, so let me get that under there. Sometimes you got to kind of finagle it to get it just right so that you can get your pin in. And so now I'm going to take this handle and lock it into place. Let me check that. So, see which way that goes. Okay. Now, sometimes when you lock these things into place, it's easy to um, move the move the puck. So I just want to check and make sure that you know everything's tight. I can still get my pins in and out, and I can. And so that is now set up. And at this point, I can take my liner off. I'm taking my liner off because I really don't need it. Um, like I said, I've got this height and, height and everything set for my blade and spring uh, without the liner. Ready to get back to our project now. So I'm going to take the spring. I've you know, got my pin in it, pin it into place. Then on my blade, I've got this larger hole for a bushing. So I've got a bushing on my pin here that we'll just put that in place and let that sit there. Put our blade on. Blade's a little bit thicker than that bushing. All right, and we're gonna release our dial indicator. Put our pressure on our spring. Get everything pushed down and held in place. And I'm going to zero out my dial indicator. So this is zeroed out in the open position. All right. So our goal here is to get the spring to be, well, theoretically you would think to get to zero in the open half and closed position. And the reason I say theoretically, because in the finished knife, that's what you want. But when this spring is not under load, I've found that what I need to do is leave it zero in the open and on this particular model, about five thousandths, four or five thousandths in the half and four or five thousandths in the uh, closed in order to zero out. Now, um, this was more important before, you know, when I was just using a regular rise fall indicator that I couldn't really put the put the spring under load. Now that I can put the spring under load with this jig, I can get it a lot more precise, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so what do we have here? We have our open position, zeroed out. We have our half stop, looks like it's at about between 12 and 13, okay? And our closed position looks like it's at about 26. So I've got a good bit to bring down here got a little bit to bring off the back back here um, it's just showing it all I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk about it so if I want to lower okay let me just get back on here if I need to get this from say it's showing 13 or 12 if I need to get that down to 5 I've got to grind away from this back back here okay if I want to get this part right here from 26 down to five, I've got a good bit to grind away from the kick and from the back back here. Now, there is one thing to keep in mind when you're grinding these different positions <clears throat> is you can look and you can see how close my blade tip is to the spring. All right, if I want that blade tip to be lowered, I'm gonna grind more off of the kick 
By grinding off the kick, it's going to lower that blade tip. And it's also going to lower uh, my, my needle here on the dial indicator. It's going to lower the spring. If I want to raise the blade, like if the blade's sitting too low in the knife and I need to raise it up like this, I'm going to grind it off the back of the, of the, of the tang back here. If I grind material off the back of the tang right here, I've got to be careful that it doesn't get this part too small and then, you know, then, then where I might have had this ground down, it's, 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 it's not going to work, you know, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's very easy to start chasing this and chasing it and chasing it until your tang basically goes away and you ruin your knife, okay? Now, I'm probably not going to show all this. I'm, I'll just kind of tell what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there to my horizontal and I'm going to grind some out of here and try to get this down to maybe uh, 10, maybe somewhere between 5 and 10 uh, to start off with. And then I'll, I'll keep going back and forth and checking it. And then once I get that kind of down to 5 or 10, then I'm going to start working on this part right here. Try to get that, you know, around 5 or 10. And then we'll pick back up and we'll start looking at some more fine tuning. All right, I've been back and forth to the grinder. I'd grind a little and come over here and check it. Grind a little and come over here and check it. And so we'll see where we are. So this is zeroed out. Then there, um, just over six. And there, I'm just over six. So that's almost identical in those the half and the closed. Well, about six and a half. About six and a half. And then uh, when everything's flat, I'm, I'm at zero there. All right. So the next thing I usually would do at this point was I would take my parts off and um, move away from the jig at this point. So at this point, I would put my, my blade and spring in between my liners and load it up and then grind it flush across the back. So let me do that real quick and then we'll take a look at it. And the reason I'm doing that is because really what I want to do <clears throat> before I start working my spring, you know, with this fixture is I want to go ahead and get my spring tension pretty much set. Now, it might be easier to see if I do it this way. Whenever I grind across the back, it's going to thin this out, which is going to uh, decrease my spring tension. However, if my spring tension is still too tight after I've ground the back flush with my liners, then I would go under here, go back to the horizontal and take some more out right here. And once I have my spring tension how I want it, then I come back to this and I do some final adjustments and I'll use this piece right here to put my spring under tension. All right, I've got my profile done there. So you can see it's even across the back. And we'll put a little oil, uh, the slip joint works pretty good. It's a little dry, well it's got a little water in it, but put some oil in there. <laughs> so I shot out. So you see it works pretty good. So it's in the handle good. All right, so let's look I don't know how much you'll be able to see here, but let's look and see for flush across here. Now remember, I left it six and a half, between six and seven high before the spring was under load. So now that I'm under load, man, that is almost just perfectly flush. We're gonna check it on the candy fixture to make sure when I'm closed, that is sitting just barely proud, which I would rather it be proud than not. Because if it's not, then we got to go back. We got to take some, some more off the uh, spring notch. But that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to disassemble this. And then uh, I'm just going to sand these parts, knock the burrs off from where I was grinding them. And then we'll pick back up on the Kennedy fixture. All right, we're back on our Kennedy fixture here. And uh, this time I've got my liner underneath. That's really just to give it 
a little extra support. And also when I put this back pin in and put this spring under load, even though this is tight, it's going to want to rotate this sometime. And so by having the liner, it basically keeps everything in line and it prevents that from happening. So it just gives you a little extra uh, stability. So that's why I've got my liner under it this time. But I got it back on here. I want to show you again before we go under load uh, what, what it's looking like so we can show you the difference. Now, I did uh, tweak these things a little bit. That's why my dial, when I, my dial indicator is in a different place when I zero it out. Plus also we ground some off the back, so that lowered that a little bit, but I'm gonna zero it out right there this time. Okay. okay so I zeroed out. Now if I go to my half stop, I'm at about six thousandths over. If I go to my closed, I'm also six thousandths over. So right at six thousandths on the closed, right at six thousandths on the half, and zeroed out on the open. All right, so what I'm gonna to wanna to do now is get my, uh, put my spring under load. So we'll get this out of the way. Go ahead and get our back pin in. All right, now this, like I said, this slides back and forth. I've got it right now as close as it can be to the tang, you know, so that I can, you know, I, I, I want to pull my spring back, but I want to be as far forward as I can for the, you know, just to get the, the leverage um, fine on it. So I can get this, do it like this, get that in there. All right, now sometimes this can be a, a little bit of a hassle because this, this piece right here, even though it's got a spring to keep it down, sometimes it wants to ride up, but we're just going to pull it straight back and see, see it's trying to ride up a little bit, but maybe it won't be enough to make a difference. So we've got to really get this back and far enough to get the blade in place. Man, see how nice that was? That worked really good. Okay, so now we're under, now we're under tension. All right, let's get this back on there. See where we are. Okay, so it's a little bit different uh, now because I'm not holding it with my fingers. We got a lot of tension on there. We're gonna zero this out. So I'm at zero. We can go to our half. And at our half, we're at four. So I really only lost uh, two thousandths when that came under load. So let's see where we are on our close. On our closed, we're at showing, it looks like it's just over three. And then right there, we're just under four. Ooh, pinch me. And then right there, we're, we're right on zero. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the load off. So I can pull this back, get my fingers out of the way. It only, only gotta go back a little bit, just enough to let you get the blade off. And I'm going to go back through the same process I did earlier where I'm just going to take, I mean, just a little off here, a little off the back, and I'm just going to work it back and forth on my horizontal grinder until I get this down within uh, one thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to leave it at a thousandths. I'm not going to go all the way to zero in the half enclosed just because since these pins don't, since we don't have the liner on the other side, I guess we could put it on there, but since we don't have the liner on the other side, um, that there's a little bit of movement, you know, in these pins. So that's what I'm going to do. If I can take this down to one thousandths uh, in the half and the closed and zero it out in the open, then that's where I would leave it until I put the knife together. So I'm going to go grind a little bit off this, test it, grind it, test it, and we'll come back when we have it, um, when I have it just about right. Well, I think I've finally got it dialed in. I went back and forth and back and forth. Um, <laughs> there's a little issue that I'll, I'll mention in just a second, but anyway, here we are, we're zeroed out in the, uh, open and then the half we're right at zero. So I usually like to leave that a thousandths over. We're right at zero. I'm not going to worry about it at this point. And I'm gonna, I'll tell you why in just a minute. And then on closed, we're at about a half a thousandths over. So like I said, ideally I'd like a, a, a thousandths over. 
Now, here's the problem that I'm having. And one reason I kept chasing this, now if I look at it, I'm a, I'm a little bit under zero. If I go back over here, I'm a little bit above zero. Um, my problem, this has nothing to do with the fixture. My problem is that this little bushing that I was using is just a just one that I all the time throw on a knife when I'm just testing or when I'm uh, grinding or putting something like that. And the bushing is probably not round anymore. And so depending on when I, where I put it in the knife, you know, depending on if I'm, anyway, depending on how it goes in there is kind of, I think what's causing my little bit of discrepancy, how one, one time I might be a little bit over and then the next time I might be a little bit under or something like that. But for all practical purposes, I had this dialed in. What I would do now is I would finish the knife. I would make me a brand new bushing uh, turn just to fit this exactly. And then when I put the knife together, like I'll put the back two pins in and, th and they won't come out. This is right before I pin the knife together. And then I'll put the blade in and I'll grind it flush across the back all the way up to like a 400 grit. And then I'll go to the half stop and I'll fill it with my fingernail to see is that spring high or low. If anything, I want it to be high so that I can grind it down, grind the, the, the end of the blade down a little bit to drop the spring. Um, but that's how I finish it out. I finish it out by eye and feel with my with the optimizers on, looking at it under the light, running my fingernail across it, making sure that it's as flush as, that I, flush as I can get it. But for a tool, for a jig, you know, if I'm within a thousandth in all three positions, that is A-OK -okay with me. All right, well, there you go. That's a somewhat quick overview of how I use the Kennedy fixture to set my rise and fall on springs um, when I'm building a slip joint. Again, is this tool necessary to make a good high quality slip joint? Absolutely not. Will this tool make some parts of the process easier? Absolutely, and that's why I like it. Um, I got this one after seeing Craig Brewers when we, when we shot his video and um, I think Tim Robinson had one as well when I was over at his place. But, um, but anyway, there you have it. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how this works and how you might could use it yourself. Thanks a lot.